Hey guys, it's Nick the Booksmith. Welcome back. Welcome back. So a little backstory on this project. The case I used to build the miniature diorama from originally was a wall clock from 1860. I found it at a thrift store several years ago, but sadly it didn't have all of its clock works. I couldn't get it running again as a clock. So I did what any self-respecting hoarder, I mean artist, would do, and I repurposed it. The mechanism in the center made up of all the brass gears was just too cool to ignore. So it had to become the main focal point. I figured I'd build above and below that. And so it evolved into a ground floor level and the attic space. And then someone would obviously need a stairwell to get from one level to another. Not just any stairwell, of course, but a hidden one. I decided to hide that behind a built-in bookcase. That took some doing because I had to figure out in my head, for one, how it should look. And then I had to build it so that it would work in practical terms. Not going to lie, I went through a couple different prototypes before I was able to build one that actually worked well. You could open it by just lifting it out and then behind it you'll see a little step and the stone wall and then the door that presumably leads upstairs. The door latches closed with a couple of magnets so it won't come swinging open on its own. Keeping with the time period, it's decorated with items that would precede 1860. I wanted to stay true to that specific time period. This, of course, also took forever because 99.9% .9 of these items, furniture, the books, everything, had to be from scratch from just what I had around the house because heaven knows I can't be bothered to go anywhere to buy anything for it. Thankfully, I have a lot of popsicle sticks and I have mat board and I have glue and I have lots of cardstock. So I was able to scrounge enough things around the house to build all these items from. I think what took the longest was just deciding on the floor plan, where the walls would be, what sort of windows, doors, flooring, etc. I was going to build. Once that was settled in my head and I was able to build those walls and the flooring and kind of get those in place, then I could visualize where everything else should be. And I was able to move on to building that furniture and uh, making the little miniature paintings, the artwork, the little books, the little miniature wood crate that's upstairs, that kind of stuff. The lighting was also a little tricky, but I ended up using a battery powered string of fairy lights. The individual lights were then tinted blue with some alcohol ink because the bulbs are covered with like little blobs of hot glue. That's what it looks like anyway. It probably isn't, but that's what it looks like. So it was pretty easy to tint that hot glue, plastic, whatever it is, with the alcohol ink because I wanted it to emulate moonlight, not sunlight, but moonlight through the window and then the attic skylight. I toyed with the idea of polishing all those brass gears, but quickly decided against it because I figured that shiny brass probably would stand out too much and wouldn't fit in with the rest of the case. Like I said, this clock is almost 162 years old. It's been around a minute. So I didn't want the gears to look like they were just brand new. The chains that are hanging from the wood base that the brass gear mechanism is on, those chains were loose inside this wall clock. I'm assuming they were there to hold the weights for the clock because I believe this was a weighted clock. There were no weights with the chain, but um, I was still able to use the chain as I just kind of draped them across some old tacks that were in the wood and just kind of add a little bit of extra interest, I guess. All the items that are on the bookcase downstairs, um, the little cigar box, there's little books, there's a little brass bowl filled with stones, paperwork, there's a brass gear, little supposed to be bottles of ink or something 
all that was all handmade. Well, except for the brass gear, I, did, I didn't make that. <laughs> and then I hung the little key ring on a peg that is part of the bookcase. And I figured that little key ring kind of gave a clue, a little hint to what was behind that bookcase. On the desk, there is different pieces of paperwork and books and a candlestick as if somebody was sitting there either writing letters or doing some kind of paperwork. The artwork on the walls are, there's different things. There's a little map. There are some oil paintings that I created some frames for. And I basically just printed out these little tiny portraits. And then I used some matte medium to make little like peaks over the top to make it look like it has texture like oil painted texture but it's just the matte medium you could also probably use mod podge just anything that has a little bit of viscosity to it so that it'll hold its shape just a little bit and show a few brush strokes across the tops of the portrait upstairs there is a little hat box that I made just out of some cardstock. It was super simple. The little wooden crate is made out of some skinny stir sticks for like coffee stir sticks. Not popsicle size, but the real skinny ones. There's a little hand, a clock hand that was also in the clock that I hung on a wall on an old upholstery tack, like a really, really old upholstery tack. Then there are some little gears. Two of them came inside the clock they weren't attached to anything but they were just inside the clock so I stacked those on top of each other and kind of stuck them upstairs um, as if they were like extra parts to fix the clock if it needed some extra parts of course you remember the trunk because we made that and the little desk downstairs during one of the videos and then the second video we made the window the flooring we plastered the walls and what else did we do stone the stone walls <laughs> hidden behind the bookcase all the little books I made by hand, they are secured into the bookcase because you know how they are. They just fall all over the place if you don't secure them. If you take a peek through the doorway that comes out at the attic upstairs, you'll probably see a little peek of wallpaper. So I wallpapered that little area to make it look like that stairwell has been wallpapered. The map on the wall in the attic was just printed out and then I used some watered down paint to dirty it up and kind of soak it and make some splatters and some drips. And then I glued that onto again some more stir sticks that were stained brown to make it look like, you know, the maps that they're either on dowel rods or they're on flat pieces of wood so you can hang them on the wall. It's not attached to the back panel of the wall. It's just resting up against the back, but I will probably attach it at some point. The skylight in the attic is made similar to the window downstairs that we made in the other video. It's vellum. And then the frame, I painted that black and then I dabbed on some rusty colors to make it look like rusted old iron. I also used the cinnamon trick and I will try to remember to link that video below where I tested out a technique that was taught by Heather at Thicket Works and I tested this out probably four years ago but it does look like rust. It's really cool. So um, check out that video and that video links to her video as well. There are some more behind the scenes photos uploaded to my brand new Patreon page. Yeah, finally made one of those, you know, just four or five years late. That's all. <laughs> I need to figure out if it's possible to upload videos. I think it is. I just got to figure that out because I think it would rock if I could upload some progress videos instead of just photos. I think that would be really cool. So far, there are two tiers available for anyone who is interested in some extra perks like behind the scenes pics. I've uploaded free images to download and use in your projects and some other patron only content while helping support this channel. So a huge thanks in advance to anybody who decides to do that. Oh, and 
The Etsy and Teachable sale is this weekend beginning midnight early Saturday morning. You know, when Friday turns to Saturday at midnight. And that'll be um, my time, Mountain Standard Time in the U.S. And then it ends Monday night at midnight. So as Monday is turning into Tuesday. As always... No coupon codes will be necessary. Everything will be already marked down to the sale price, including all of the bookmaking classes at Teachable and every digital download in the Etsy store. Which reminds me, I have a folder of new digis to upload, so I guess I better get on that. Well, that is it for me. I hope you enjoyed um, seeing a little bit of this project. It took about two months to get done course I wasn't working on it 24 7 but probably most of the time building everything from scratch was it was wow and please tell me what you think I am toying with the idea of taking the glass door off I'm not sure if I'm going to hang it on the wall or set it on a shelf somewhere or on a table or I might end up selling it at some point I don't know but Tell me what you think. If it was going to be in your house, would you leave the glass door on or would you take it off and store it away somewhere safe? You can see through the door, of course, because there's two panes of glass, although it's really old and ripply and it's got bubbles in it because it's the original. So it's, you know, it's really old stuff, but um, it kind of obstructs the view a little bit, but not too bad. So tell me what you think. If it was in your house, would you just want it to look like like a frame with the vignette on the inside? Or would you want the glass door on the top when it was being displayed? I, I really don't know. Honestly, I am on the fence and I'm not leaning one way or another. So I'd be really curious to know what you think. What would you do? All right, guys. Well, I will let you go for now. I will... Um, Leave the links down below to the Etsy store and to Teachable and to the new Patreon page and to the video making the cinnamon rust. I'll remember to do that. The next video is going to be a craft time mystery. I already have the story ready to go. I just need to turn on the camera and record making the book that I'm going to be making. Hopefully, I will be able to uh, get a camera that I can count on because I'm still saving up for that. (laughs) That's why I'm doing yet another voiceover because my camera just, it's not keeping the audio. Yeah, which is super fun, right? Kind of defeats the purpose. But anyway, I'm working on that. I hope everybody is having a good night and I hope you have an excellent rest of your week and I will see you all really, really soon in the next video. Bye guys.